committee that is coming from yours truly and my co-host Bill Lurch. We are the jazziest, snazziest, razzma fucking tazziest tag team ready to blow the doors right off the living room hinges. And if we don't do it with this sick fucking intro, then all there is to do is to get boomed on live with it. something extra on that. You guys put a little extra, hey, just a little touch. Hey, put a little something, something. Very nice. Something, something. Very nice. What's up? Hola, como estas? Que está pasando todos? Oh, that's my uh, Spanish show, Late Nights on Wednesdays at Nueve, 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 Nueve y Medio. Nueve y Medio. I, I got to stop butchering the <laughs> Spanish language. We're a little, want to tell people why we're a little out of breath, Teron? A little out of breath, a uh, little, little nervous, a little stressed out. Technology, man. What a Technology, bitch. technology. Um, how's everybody doing? Yay! Hey! Yay! We're retarded, all of us. No, we are doing wonderfully. Um, I just want to take a moment and just breathe. <sighs> that was wonderful. Feels good. Mm. Was that you? That was not me. That okay. was my, that was my mouth. Um, anyways, it's good to have you guys here again on Boom Done Live. Uh, this is uh, June 24th, Monday night at 7.05 p.m. Sorry we're late. It's a, uh, you know, it's part of the business that we call Showtime. Live. Yes, live. Live show. Well, well this is Boom Done Live, and uh, I don't know, let's get to it, man. Um, I don't know, do you want to talk about that? You that? Know, I was just, uh, you know, my well, thing was uh, I acted this weekend. I was oh. in a short film. A buddy of mine put together a short film, and I actually, he wanted me to be involved. So I actually had to learn lines. Well, first of all, first yeah. of all, did you do any lines? I did no lines before or after the shoot. Okay. No, sir. So how did I, you? I went in with a couple of cups of coffee and rare and a go. So I, it was just a, a new thing. I hadn't done it since the seventh grade. I was uh, one of the three wise men how in my seventh grade play. I forget, I forget which one. I believe I gave Frankincense. That's to, so uh, funny. Can I, can, to baby Jesus. Did you, do you know my first acting? Should I talk no, about that? No, please. That first acting job I ever had uh, when I was in second grade, I was yeah. the only Muslim kid at a Catholic school in Riverdale, Maryland. Riverdale, Maryland. And this kid had dropped out or he got sick or something. I, was, yeah. I had a second grade brain. I don't remember all that yeah, much. Yeah, I, do remember the, I do remember some of the, the, right. the key points was teacher came up to me and said, okay, hey, hey Turhan, um, would you like to play Joseph in front of the whole school inside the church of St. Bernard's, yeah. St. Bernard's? No yeah. yeah. I'm like, I don't know. Okay, whatever. And I said, I'm not going to learn any lines. Right. You know, I don't, I don't, I don't do that stuff. And I, I know I'm not I using that, dude. I don't do that. Like a young Marlon Brando. Yeah. I don't learn lines. Just tape them against I'm, the Mary, Mother Mary. And and I know, Bill, that I'm not using uh, the words that I'm using now because yeah. I'm much more studied and less Muslim. Yeah. Um, Which you learned in school. Yeah. So, so I said, as long as I can bring the script up stage with me. So, like, I, I had this piece of paper, and I was like, I was, I was like, um, I had this staff. It was like carved out piece of wood. Nice. It was beautiful. Good prop. Yeah. yeah. And then Mary was knitting. And the whole yeah, Mary was knitting. And there's this whole bit. Of course she was. She's knitting. And she's like. Right before she gave birth. She's like seven. Right. And I'm like seven. Yeah. So I have no ball hair yet. And no, I'm just saying we're, we're young people. We're young people. We're like babies. Yeah. You know. And so I'm knocking. I enter. I'm knocking on this marble circular altar. And the whole school, kindergarten through eighth packed. is there. Must have been a packed house. And I'm nervous and shaking. Yeah. And I have this staff in my hand knocking uh -huh. and I'm holding this and you this in. paper <laughs> hi how are you Hello, doing man. there it's Do sucking it. Right. it was just so traumatic what part of the story is this? is this when you like you introduce like the, the baby was a baby born is there like a little baby Jesus there or I, is this like I, right before the con you know before she gives you know I, I was so mad at this school because for every Thursdays we go to church and me yeah. and my brother were the only Muslims in the whole school and we always wanted to taste no we always wanted to taste that communion that flat Ooh, piece the, of the circular wafer. 
Yeah, but we never got to taste it, so we used to walk up so to the holy, So holy, so tasty. Yeah, w when, when the line started, you know, you'd get up, and you're like, oh, you're getting out of the pew, yeah. and then you're walking up, and you're in the succession, mm -hmm. and you're like, you're like, uh-huh, and I'd open my mouth, and I'd go, yes. And, then, and, yes. and the priest would be like, I'm ready. no, I'm sorry, Turhan. He would bless me on my head and, oh, turn, me and no. turn me away. And I'm, I'm like, send you back to the seat hungry. So, so three years passed. I never got to taste this wafer. And I swear, I wanted to taste this wafer so much that I used to take Wonder Bread growing up and take off the crust and smash and mold and the make bread. Make it into the, uh, the host. And make it into the, the host. host and, yeah. and I used to taste it and dream of it going into my mouth. Sounds really sexual. But going into my mouth and I'd be like, mmm. And I was very, you know, imagine. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Imagine. The ritual. It's the whole thing yeah. of like receiving the, the body and blood. Is it? So later on in my life, I'm like yeah. 20, 25. I say, you know what? Fuck it. I'm going to walk into a church. I'm going to get saved. I'm gonna go to a, a, a mass, okay. and I'm gonna eat this fucking. It's wafer. gonna happen. I'm gonna eat this wafer. It's and not I, gonna be in Maryland. He's I, gonna go. So, yeah. I went for this religious experience, and I and I studied Catholicism at NYU and Judaism and Islam. So I'm I'm much more elevated mentally. It doesn't sound like it now, but I definitely yeah, was. Yeah. And I went in there, and I went through the you know the procession or whatever. In in the guy he gives me, and I go with confidence. I stick right. my head back and I go. Eh. And he, same thing. Uh, yes. Yeah. And then they arrest me. No, they. <laughs> so he puts the thing in, in my tongue, and I eat it, and I walk away, and I'm like, "This is a regular old cracker. That's a regular old way. It was just a regular, a dried out, yeah. saltine cracker. So, yeah. So that was blessed. The, the journey there was just. Was it almost like the first time you had sex? Same story. Like you're 20. You know, it was this and that. I mean, you know what? It turns out I waited so long, and it was little, little, it was, little, wasn't, it was, little, uh, little almost the same in the sense that it was forced. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> no. Anyway. All right. So you. you so no. We, anyway. No. No. The whole. The, the point of that being. I had a newfound respect for you know the fact that you have to learn lines. You know the actors have to go, they have to learn their lines, they have to know their lines, and they have to be on set. They're in front of a lot of people, then they have to react and they have to listen. All these things. Well, and when it clicks, oh, I do, and that's the thing. I have a newfound respect. But, I did wait, wait, this wait. one experience, and when it clicks. Like a tiny but the thing is, when it clicks, the thing is, I had that moment where I was listening. I knew my line. I was listening. I was reacting. I had the trifecta. I think it's a trifecta, right? Listening, know your lines. React and listen. Yeah. Is that is that is that good? Did I did I pass the test? Anyway, it was exciting. Yeah. It was great. It was a good experience. It was the first grade. So kudos to <laughs> Stella <laughs> Turhan. I know you guys are actors. Stella, what do you feel about doing monologues and stuff like that? Monologues. I mean, do you do them anymore? Or are you just so I, beautiful that you, you don't know. have to fucking do anything? No. <laughs> totally. No, no. I actually hate monologues. I hate yeah. just the idea of like talking to a, a wall. Without having, without having yeah. a person to interact with, I mm -hmm. think it's just stupid. The whole idea of a monologue, I think, it just takes something out of context. It's not very, I, I don't like it. I prefer doing a scene, you know, with right. somebody with a, you know. Me e too. Even if you have somebody that is terrible, you know, a terrible reader, you, you still have a live, you know, an alive human being. Uh, do, do most, I mean, do most rehearsals, I mean, not rehearsals, do most uh, auditions now require a monologue of some kind? Not, not, all, of them. not no. all of them. Not all of them? They might no. read, read off page it's or whatever. It's so unnatural, I think. It's so, so yeah. unnatural. I never and, liked it. And I, I, I think that they feel that, too. They don't want to sit in here and listen to 50 actors all day do two minute yeah. monologues yeah. and just like butcher shit that they would want to do better themselves. What or... was the hardest part? Not that this is about you, but what was the hardest part getting in? I mean, for me, the memorization is something for me that that is a uh, big hurdle. I mean, if I know the lines, then I can relax and I can do the thing. What was like the most? I mean, you good at memorization, Stella? I'm it, very good. Yeah, you're pretty I, good I, at just picking up yeah. the lines. <laughs> I'm <Ooh. just> brilliant. <laughs> Jamie here is laughing. So that's uh, not the hard. That's yeah. not the hard part for you. No, no, I, I, I know. I never had a problem with. All right. Memorizing. What is the hardest right. part of acting? I. Let's see if you can remember this. See if you can remember this. Get out. Get out. <laughs> get out. Get out of the fucking. Get out. Get out. <laughs> get out. <laughs> so that's reacting and that's Re it. Re acting. <laughs> <laughs> I, I have to tell you right now. I went to NYU. I'll make this quick as possible. Three minutes. No. Um, I never learned a monologue. I did learn some, and I got tired of it. And I'm like, I used to audition for the main stage shows, and I would just make up the monologue on the spot. Yeah. That's and so much better. I would tell the dream that I had the night before. I'd smoke a joint, go in. There you go. They're hearing, yeah. they're hearing this story for the first time. Super. They're getting an electric performance. They want me to be good. I want to be good. We want to make some business. There you go. Then I'll learn your fucking part yeah. later. Right. That's it. That's so that like was going guns blazing. I like that. It, 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 I'm telling you, it That's worked. That's brilliant. In yeah. fact, I did all the main stage shows in one year at NYU. I did all four of them. I got in all four of them, and, and the, the last time that it happened, ten years prior, was 
Well, when Kristen Johnson of Third Rock from the Sun, she was that, that that's when she was kind of most yeah. known. She did that. Nice. So it was kind of cool, and I did and it all. Why you trivia then? Yeah, yeah, dude. Anyway, anyway, so where are we at with hey. time? Because we want to talk about our special guest tonight, Quincy. Yeah. Yeah. We our Some special Morris, man. Um, our special guest tonight is Quincy Morris, and uh, uh, this is an interesting cat. He um, is a uh, a writer, uh, producer, creator of a hit uh, web series uh, that we're going to talk about, and also he has his own production company. And uh, hey, I'm, I just can't wait to hear him. But you know, there's there's a part of the show where we just got to turn the rock inside out and do some. Uh -huh. uh, do some hip hop flavor because back in the late '90s, I was going to be signed with three other white guys. Believe it or not, this isn't a joke, but it could have turned out to be one. To be the next Beastie Boys, not the Beastie Boys like take over the Beastie Boys, but be a Beastie Boys band. And I didn't want to do it, and because I didn't want to be with three other guys, I wanted to do my own thing. And it was just a, t a tough game. This is before Eminem came out. I'm not saying I'm him at all, and I ain't trying to be him. I just like to f play around and freestyle a little bit. To some uh, some good little riffs. Get 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 something going there, Jamie Igneo, my, Jamie my Igneo. guitarist. Ooh. Ooh. Oh, can I flow with this? I don't know. Yeah, what's up? Ripped up, huh? I can feel it. Get that beat. Boom. Here we go. I'm gonna. Ah. Uh. Here we go, guys. One, two, three. Uh. Uh. Ripped up from the slippery rhythms of my position and the wisdom that imprison the systems we live in. It sucks so bad, slap my face. Stop rapping this way, cause it's disgusting. Why you trust me? Cuff me up to the bedpost trying to fuck me. Kiss me, discuss how you love me. Or else, a miracle whip your ass with this hysterical parable so unbearable and terrible. My middle name is Ivan. Living better than yesterday? The less you stay, the best I play. So pay me back and stay up for the layaway. Living room is full with the boom dump play by play. Getting nifty on the shift, uh. Busy with incredible riffs, smoke the piff the Sticky icky in the woods, that's tricky Who they? Cincinnati? Tiger blood is up in me Watch it fatty, with that dollar menu angioplasty Read a book cause your whole life isn't lasting You're dead, how you like me now? I'm blasting, on every level altogether Find a better friend forever in the nether regions With allegiance to Janet, from another planet Having green boobs and hair like feathers With two cousins named Sarah Bovera Take off that mascara, I'm a Turkish man, don't hurt this man Reverse the plan, curse the Bambino boo boo, it's Yogi Berra Trying to send hate mail inside a love letter Hashtagging this and that, Instagramming with Snapchat Booking your face with a status update Get the next guest in cause I'm late Boom done, having fun, I love you Bye bye, uh <laughs> <laughs> Hell yeah, we just did that. That was really good. Oh, thank you. So honey. let's go get our guest, Quincy yeah, yeah. Morris. Yeah, Stella, please hey. do the honors. Tiptoe in there like a gazelle. Mmm, on the predator. Oh. Uh uh. There it is. Good intro music there, James. Uh uh. Yeah. Quincy Morris. Quincy Morris in the house. That's your area, young man. Oh, Quincy Morris, nice to have you here. Hey, nice to Welcome, be here. Welcome, sir. By the way, by the way, Quincy, before you say anything, I wanted um, our lovely audio guest tech woman to say hello for a second. Can you introduce yourself, please? Please. What's going on? My name is Miss Rain uh, from Miss Rain Productions, and I'm here joining these guys today to while I with y'all and have some fun, crack jokes. Awesome. Yeah, awesome. I love it. Yeah. Awesome, awesome. All right. Can I get comfortable? That's the yeah, essence yeah. of the show right there. Can, yeah, get comfortable. <laughs> Can you get comfortable? Can, and that's the question. Um, how are you, by the way, man? You're looking good. I know the travel's Thank up you. here. You know, we don't have to I say know, where I we're need, at. Uh, yeah. I need a passport to, yeah. to get up here. But no, it's great. It's Everyone says that. They, this is uptown. There's no doubt about it's it. It's uptown. This is uptown. It's uptown. Um, you, you get I, a good breeze this far. Yeah, we do, yeah. <laughs> um, I, I first have to say, we, we are... You know, we we uh, we want to get to the crux of it. I, I've looked at you're a very talented guy, oh, thank and you. you've got a following, big you have time. A following. So we want to talk about why you have a following. You want to talk about you have you have a production company. You have a hit yes. web web series. Um, is Bill? Am I getting off track here? I mean, I'm trying no, to no, be, it's absolutely. Yeah, I wonder. Got a lot going on. What would you What would you like to say first and foremost about whatever it is you came here for? Uh, first of all, this is a sweet setup. I don't know if you all nice. <laughs> see all this. Yeah. It's really cool. It looks like a like a hard rock cafe, kind of like rock and roll. Yeah, whole, a little member beer on the wall. Yeah, There's a, 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 a flying carpet, carpet there. There's like, a guitar, <laughs> a Turkish. 
guitar. It's a little. There's we got it all. Really cool yeah. guitars yeah. all system over of, this, uh, system the of studio. Uh, I really, really cool. I really appreciate that. There is. I've been here for 12 years, and I swear there's probably like four or five people that has commented on the room, and I, it's, I just have to say yeah. thank you. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> and, and if you notice behind you, there's a there's a plaque. There, there's a picture frame with a couple that I don't even know. I know. Yeah. That's, it's, so, <laughs> it's so, that's the randomness that we love. It's store bought. You've accumulated well. Yeah. Anyway, back to you, Quincy. Uh, so why am I here? Um. <laughs> why? Well, seriously. Why am I here? Uh, yeah, we do have a, a big following. Um, it's the show first came out. In whoa, 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 what, what, what show though? Because oh, not okay, everybody okay. knows. Right. Yeah, everybody knows. Yeah, yeah. It's uh, called In Between Men. Okay. It's a web series based in New York City. It's about four urban professionals who live, work, and play in New York City, and uh, it's about mainly about um, kind of like these all-American guys who are like masculine guys who happen to be gay but don't really fit into. Uh, the cliche mode of what gay is. They don't really yeah. relate to mainstream gay culture. They're not straight, so hence they live in a world in between. That's the double entendre it's, of the title. I, I saw a YouTube video where you were talking for about three and a half minutes about that, and I, it's very, right away in the first 30 seconds, it's like, oh, I can see the hook. Yeah, it's a point of view. Yeah, it has a nice uh, double, it has a sexual double entendre, and it has a, yeah. <laughs> and, <laughs> a and, literal and, one. And if you if you if you haven't checked it out, um, there's a lot of people that have. You know, some of the population out there in the world, uh, the internet world. Um, the 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 logo, it, it's like parentheticals or not. not That's because you notice that. I don't know if people always pick up on that. No. Yeah, it's just the word in brackets. Yeah. So the yeah. word itself is in between. Yeah, so it's it's it's, it's subtlety it's, is you know. Less is more. I know one of the actors on it. Uh, you know, I don't. Know, we not like intimately as far as I mean. I he, I wrote a script that he was in, and he was really good. Chase, uh, Chase Coleman. Chase Coleman. Yeah, he awesome. plays like a doll. He's like a baby doll face, he's blonde haired. A, he's the uh, the youngest of the group. Yeah. And uh, he each of the characters represents a different part of my personality, and Chase's uh, character represents the naive. Uh, one. <laughs> so Quincy, you, wrote, you, you wrote this series and you produced it, right? Those are the... the yes, I wrote movie. it and I produced it uh, with my partner, Jennifer Gelfer, who is also the director of yeah. the show. We're the two executive producers. When did the idea first come yeah. into your head? Uh, uh, so the real deal is that the, the idea came into my head because I was had just got out of a, a relationship and it was like I was going through like an eight-month depression. It was a bad breakup. Oh, man. And um, uh, <laughs> and the, I guess the best stories Sorry. come from real life. I've been so, there. I've been there. Uh, <laughs> been there. Who hasn't? Who hasn't? Ironically, the worst part of my life actually turned into the best part of my life. So uh, I just wanted to document the relationship on paper. Huh. And it was kind of cathartic because we had differing views on why I went in the direction <laughs> I went. And I wanted to document the truth. Uh, and then I just started uh, also inputting my, my viewpoints about... Uh, uh, the gay community and, and the social norms and just things, the opinions that I've had rolling in my head for a long time because um, I myself didn't really feel connected uh, to, to a lot of the gay community. I felt like um, like I was a, I'm a man and I felt like well, I kind of like guys, but I don't really would like a lot of the stuff that the, the mainstream culture seems to practice. So yeah. um, it took me a long time to realize that, yes, I am gay, I just not they don't subscribe to that. It's not what you see yeah. on so, Bravo, whatever the main, you know, whatever right? And so even random, when you go out, you go to New York City, you go out, and you're like, eh, should I participate in this? It's not really. It doesn't feel organic, or, or to me, I guess if you're not your own human being, if you're not your, a not grounded person, you kind of get caught up in a lot of this stuff out there, and then it becomes who you are, and you think that's who you are. Um, but then for me, I just kind of witnessed it, didn't like it, and backed up from it. So. Well, you know, I, I was talking to Bill yesterday because you came to us in a. We we came together in a couple of days, and it was I was actually very surprised. I just Facebook in, inboxed you, and you were like, "Yeah." I was yeah, like, I'm "Awesome!" Let's, let's, <laughs> no, that's great. I mean, you know, as a busy guy, when I'm really busy, I'm just I just respond quickly. I don't care if anybody thinks that oh, it's because I'm not busy. No, I just yeah, exactly. I, if I feel it, I go well, exactly. yes, whatever. But more importantly, I told Bill yesterday, I was like, I like the show idea because it reminds me of that that if you've ever read Angels in America, anybody in the room. There's a, a, a great line that Roy Cohn has that says, I, I'm not a homosexual. I'm just a guy that likes to fuck around with other guys. And that's like, it just makes, it just take, pulls off a label yeah. off of... Uh, well, cause, well, well, there's maybe. also members of the community who, who, thinks that, who think that that means that you are somehow not being true to what being gay is. Yeah. So there's, there's outlash from members of the community as well who thinks that guys who don't act like the cliche, that they are just trying to be straight. And 
they're putting on an act, um, which uh, uh, publicists will probably get in trouble. So yeah. in trouble you made a great but, point um, on the. Um, I'm sorry, go ahead. But I, I just say that for a lot of times, it, it feels like just being yourself is really just about being, and then yeah. it takes more energy and a lot more of an act to do the other things or yeah. Yeah. if it's just a dude it's like that's kind of what comes yeah. naturally he said something like uh, there are 10 or 15 things about these characters maybe the 14th is that they're gay that was like one of the yeah. I remember you saying that as part of like the idea of the show is that we want to promote these other aspects that the professionals that they're exactly I mean even for myself I feel like you're trying to get a job I'm kind money. I'm generous I'm you know intelligent I'm a whole lot of other things created before I feel like I'm gay I'm yeah. back before I'm gay um, and but some people put that first, they lead with it, yeah. and therefore it defines everything that they do is around that. And uh, and that's what most of the, I feel like most of the offerings in the media for any kind of LGBT content, characters are usually one-dimensional, they're caricaturish, they're, they're the, the, the comic relief, they're just all these things, but they're not really actual people, they're not just guys. And so this was like, if you want to go see that, there's plenty of that to go see. Yeah. This was something that gives voice to a lot of people out there who just don't see themselves on, on television. When, you, when you're getting backlash from a gay community about something that has to do with gay subject matter, <laughs> that, that means you got something. You got on the right track. Right. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, you're shaking it up. Yeah, if you know, I have a friend who keeps saying, and, and I've heard this before, but she says, you know, if, if they're, whether they're talking about your they're talking about you good or bad good they're or bad. talking about you and uh, and you, you're trying to do good i would say 90 percent of the feedback we get is good that people are happy to see that the content is out there and that they can finally i have been posted a piece on us a few years ago uh and they related this it was in the sports section about us because they said one day you know hopefully gay athletes can come out because the re maybe they'll be able to look at a show like this and go that's the kind of game look at you I quincy am. way ahead of the time and that so was like three years ago oh really so, yeah. that's so and there cool. was nothing for them to really point to because when people hear you gay they get they have all, the, all these assumptions and tv and film is such a powerful medium that once people start seeing images that counteract what they think it is yeah i'll be able to associate being gay with those images as opposed to you know that's with anything not yeah with anything like and, and having those guys from uh you know from those beaches down further not to like they're, they're not as intelligent some of these people at the beaches they'll, they'll wear they'll wear because i went to school in north carolina in the mountains yeah. you know a kid, <laughs> got, a kid got sent home in the eighth grade because he had a shirt on that had a guy a cartoon guy banging another cartoon guy in the rear saying stop aids and i it's like there it is you yeah, know it is. it's like that's not really yeah. happening anymore and you get in tweets from like from Le from uh, kobe bryant saying oh that's so cool what what's his name did from uh, yeah and i Denver. actually said that online i'm not a big fan of kobe bryant but the fact that a kobe bryant came out publicly on and supporting jason collins to that, me that, is just as important as jason collins coming out because all the kids yeah in the who are young who would be ready to cut who are attack jason collins won't because they're idle Kobe Bryant, he's you know, doing it. Him, oh, he's so. doing it. It's mob mentality right. yeah. everywhere. Good right. or bad, yes. it's mob mentality. Yes. Oh, he did it. Okay. Cool. What do you think his? What do you think next season is going to be like for him? Honestly, what, what do you think is going to be like an up and down journey? I mean, there's going to be so many eyes on, on him just playing like every other season. I'm not a big sport. yeah. Not a big production. <laughs> There'll be a little bit of back. I mean, it'll be an interesting journey to watch. Um, but if somebody gives him opportunity, I think he's just probably going to be just as productive as he always is. Right. Been. So. Uh, which is good and bad. I mean, it doesn't affect the game. You yeah, know? Um, absolutely. You know, there's probably people who probably say that it still hasn't, it's still a barrier that hasn't been crossed because if a big basket, big star basketball player hasn't come out and done it. It's more yeah. somebody off the bench who doesn't really produce a lot and is yeah. a little bit um, ineffective. Um, but either way, but he's the first, so there'll be the more first. to come. Well, yeah. absolutely. Well, obviously, obviously, your show has production value, and, and and you're getting a lot of views. And I wanted to talk about that a little bit. But is that do you want to talk about your company first? Uh, Cube Entertainment to... is Cubed, not Cubed. Yeah, it's, spell that think. for everybody. That it's a uh, Q U B E D, uh -huh. and the genesis of it is that um, my name's Quincy, so I use the Q. And um, at the time, I, when I started, I wanted to be able to do, produce TV, film, and web content. So that's three things. Yeah. So when you take something to the third power, it's cubed. Yeah, smart. So then I... You're, you're, you you're obviously a visionary in some sense. But people keep saying cubed, so yeah. um, I'm going to come up with a different word. Fuck, <laughs> fuck that. I'm going to that. Just cut that down right now. Yeah. I, got, I, got a, I got straight up, I got a gun. Um, I, got yeah, a I, got, <laughs> I got a gun. No, I'm kidding. But I started it just so I can produce uh, my own stuff. 
So instead of asking permission for someone else to pick up, I wrote, just we, make it myself. Yeah. We're at an interesting point in our in our show, um, drive wise. We're not just sitting around here like to get five people every week to come here and hang out and have a glass of wine and some chips for three hours from Queens, Brooklyn, or wherever everybody lives. This is awesome. I would come back here. Yeah, good. People, people, you're welcome. People back. Do. So <laughs> that's your spot right there. We're gonna. So, it, so where I'm getting at is that three or three months ago, back in I think March, I remember I have a photographic memory. March 25th, you had a thing at on one on one casting in New York City. Nobody really knows. It's a yeah. very reputable place where people like Quincy that has a, some sort of professional status and knows some kind of expertise about a certain platform. Uh, like web series and, and getting one going and monetizing it and getting views. Well, he had a, I just noticed that, I was like, oh, I, I, I friended this guy on Facebook uh, several months ago because he knew Chase Coleman from right. the News and Ears show. And I'm like, oh, I saw him on one, one on one. And we, we're at that point where we want to start doing that here. And, it, you know, this is our eighth show. We've been doing it. The, 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 the main thing is to do it consistently. Right. Where can they find you every week? Okay. And then you start get, getting annoying. Oh, they've, they've been doing 20 shows. I, I see the logo. I've, hear, I've heard them. And right. getting people like yourself on, people that are, that are about to break or going to break or have broken just a bit, you know, uh, is what our platform is. And we, we were just curious, um, how do you get your views? I mean, is that something you, you don't want to go out for free here? It's, it's okay so if you don't. Funny when you said that because I was going to say I actually consult on that now. Um, All right. For one fifty an hour. Oh, one fifty an hour. Um, but friend prices. Yeah, was, you know, you know why I did it? I actually didn't do it originally for money. I did it because I people would come up and ask me, and they would seem so enthusiastic about it, and I was enthusiastic about helping them. So I would sit down and I would give them hours and hours and hours of like all my experience, and I would give them proposals and everything that I had written before. Yeah. And then they never did anything. But you have a you could be so I was just like I just wasted a lot of my time. I don't have a lot of time to waste. So if I'm gonna do it now, then if you're se people who are serious about it, we'll pay for it. And uh, if they yeah, end up not doing that, anything, yeah. at least I got a paycheck. I, I don't do it for money. It's just it's my time is valuable. So I, I know someone cool. who said that if you set your price, it's you'll meet that value and you will care about your. Exactly. Yeah, that's that's exactly. exactly. It's but like yeah, you don't want to pay it. That that's it, okay. Just to backtrack a little bit, how did you get funding for the uh, in between men? How did that? How did that? How did you start pitching that? Was so, it something you wanted for television or something you thought about being a web series? What was your? Um, thank you, Bill. So that was actually, soft. I did originally when I conceived of the show, trying to pitch it to TV, but that, there's something about having given someone a script and expecting they're going to interpret it the way you wrote it that does not in my control that I don't like. So uh, I come from theater. So in theater, we workshop things and we do stage reading. So what yeah. I did was uh, we put it, I said, let's put together a stage reading of the show. Um, I hired a director, Jennifer Gelfer, who later directed the series as well. And we decided just to have, and just have one night where we invite interested parties and potential investors. And we did. And we got... Um, a lot of things like that. We got people who owned restaurants. You know, Mandarin Oriental came. They let us shoot really? restaurants. We got our production insurance. We got our, eight, our, our first AD out of that. We got our, our DP out of that. And then we had an, an anonymous, um, someone connected to our, our investor who wanted to be an anonymous investor that came out of that. So yeah. I just was like, I'm doing the basic but, work. Just so much is just common script. sense. I don't really know what the hell I was doing. I was just yeah. like, I'm just following my instincts about, yeah. let me do what I do know how to do. And uh, if it happens, then yeah. it happens, and it happened for us. So honestly, I just feel like I'm really lucky because no one raises money like that first time out, first project out. Uh, Did you feel like you were stepping into your your uh, like like a, a like, like your struggle? Yeah, like your 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 struggle was like it's not struggle. I mean, there's still you care, I but you don't worry as much. Or, I didn't know if I wanted to do it for the rest of my life, but what I did feel like was that it was. Um, ordained because or serendipitous wow. because it was so easy in a sense i mean it wasn't easy but it was way easier and to the fact where i spoke to my dp and i was like is it easy to make this movies like this <laughs> yes. she's like no no like, you know I, it was and what actually made me kept me going i always say was my naivete about the business had i known all the obstacles you you encouraged to you, you encounter in making yeah. a film i probably would have talked myself out of it yeah but i literally as i wrote the show and the day i was finished it i wrote the last the period in the last sentence and was like all right i'm done let's make it like that kind of so like, you were already ready to go all right let's just yeah. go make it now and uh, so, yeah, I just had, we just used that. I felt like definitely it was uh, meant to be, even if I never did anything else, I felt like this was meant to be because every obstacle that came up easily went away and the replacement, the solution was always better than what the original um, situation was before the problem came up. So, wow. 
every single time. Yeah. <laughs> it got better and better. Well, I, I, I did, I played the, this, the video that I watched you talking in that one on YouTube, as, as well as the other videos I saw and the, the, the articles that I read. Um, uh, and the person I was watching with uh, says, oh, he's intelligent. Oh, thank you. Yeah, so that, that's a compliment. I mean, <laughs> you, you don't need to hear that, but I, I wanted to tell you that. Good. Um, I'm glad that comes up. Um, what, do you have a question for our, our good friend here about you? You had something in mind uh, in talking to my wonderful broadcast. Yeah. Yes. yes. Yeah. I, well, I was we share the mic what, here, Quincy. We're... What do you think about, like, uh, what's happening to to uh, everything that in, in social media? You know, like, I, I know that you you first put up your series on YouTube, right? That yes. Was your first class. No, I was not on YouTube first. Actually. Where, where? So first, we had our, we had a van, we do, so we still do. We had a vanity URL. Vanity URL is basically whatever you want. Dot com. Dot whatever. Um, so it was in between men. Dot com. And first, we put, uh, we embedded, we put the show on Vimeo and embed, embedded Vimeo on the site. So you had to come to our site to watch it first. Okay. Um, so that's what we launched, and probably about a few weeks into it, we put it on YouTube. Um, once it was on YouTube, though, it didn't take very long before the YouTube views outnumbered the views on our site, um, but combined it was like two and a half million viewers. Without so giving too much away, how do you do that? How do you take, like, assuming the content is great, mm -hmm. how do you put it out there just at a home base, and then how do you put it on YouTube, and how does that, is it word, I mean, word of mouth is always going to be good, content is always the king, is always the most important thing, but were there things that you did, small little things that you did to kind of send it out to friends, family, blast it out to... I yeah. Mean, is so, that what it is? You link it to something else and then it catches not fire? Not really. I mean, later on, but, but the bulk of my work I did before the show even came out. So uh, one of the things I teach, and I'm getting free free advice. Yeah, I thought so. Uh, do we, do, do, do we have a little taste? Uh, a little taste. <laughs> Stella, Stella, we, 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 Stella, we don't have a cough button. Uh, just, just, just act like you're pressing one. Go ahead. <laughs> yeah, go ahead. No one's getting this one. Most I, uh... <laughs> we spent the better part of a year building our audience before anything was ever shot. Ah. So my philosophy was, okay, like TV spent the whole summer building you up to look forward to the show coming out in the fall. Yeah. Let's build up the anticipation until it comes out. And so we just spent the better, half, better part of a year doing that until when it launched, the first day it had like 10,000 views in four hours because there were people already wet, ready for it to come out and they were counting down and they, you know, they couldn't wait for it to premiere. So they were expecting it to come out on that day. Um, and things we did during the year was we did a lot of promotional events. I, I cast the show probably a year before we shot it because I knew I needed to use the guys and their good looks to help raise money for it. Yeah. See, Quincy, so, you're a smart uh, man. So it's a year of free advertising. You got five events. hungry actors that want people to see it. Yeah, and they show. were, you know, good, very enthusiastic good. about the show as well. They, it's, you know, they invested their time. They showed up. They did stuff that. I hate doing like grassroots marketing, going up literally with a flyer and talking to people. Yeah. Uh, we did the AIDS walk because, and I don't really do those different kind of walks. Um, yeah. But I was like, what do people do in those walks? All they do is look at T-shirts of the people I did from the organizations in front of them. Yeah. That's all you do the whole time you yeah. walk in is read everybody else's T-shirts. So I said, so why don't we do the walk? We'll get some in-between men T-shirts. There's a website on them. It has the pictures of the guys. And at the very least, it'll make people think and wonder what that is. And then we noticed, like, the next day we had a big spike in our website um, hits because oh, after wow. the day of the walk. So just doing, always thinking outside the box, trying to be creative, trying to do something. Um, always think of the show as the web series. I think it's a TV, TV series. Yeah. So I try to approach the marketing that way. That, that's what uh, I thought. Yeah. That's what you think. So I'm not anything special uh, to think that, but yeah. I thought it was like this TV series. And you did one thing also, Quincy, I was smart I read up on it, was that you got a lot of brand names on the web series. Is that something you did through just, grass, just reaching out to them and saying, I have this web series, you know, I, big names there, Converse and, and well, certain first, designers that were you promote in the show yeah. and you use their clothing and you use their brands. The first one was the biggest one. So uh, Mark Jacobs was the first one that jumped on board. Um, I mean, to be fair, I have a background in advertising and marketing. So, I, 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 was, uh, I read that. Not like I was just like, oh, that was you know an idea dropped into my head. But yeah. I... Um, uh, ben, who who worked at Mark Jacobs, um, I was just like, if you can get me a meeting with somebody in PR, that's all I need. And uh, I basically put together a presentation, a proposal, showed them how their show fit with um, the dynamic of In Between Men, how Mark Jacobs' downtown cool style fit with these guys who are urban professionals, who are sophisticated, who worked hard, played hard, had great apartments, had, you know, had a lot of fun, and how, they, uh, how it fits into their life. And they went for it, and they gave us a, a shitload of clothes. And I basically wanted to basically, I needed those clothes Mark because Jacobs I wanted to do a, stuff, Jamie, a photo shoot, one day photo shoot that gave us six months worth of promotional material. So we just shot one day, eight hours, all those outfits. And I had six months to do different kind of postcards, to do things for the website, to have different looks in different places. 
And then they also agreed to dress one character for the show. So once you had that kind of credibility yeah. on board, then it was easier to get uh, like uh, Ike and Feline, John Bartlett, we had the first season. Just to name, I don't even know those companies. We're, <laughs> we're going to find them. <laughs> Well, between that, I don't. Can you, I, um, everyone looks good. Yeah, there's the exit, please. I'm offended. But I also tell people <laughs> another thing. I tell people when I consult is when you write for when you write for web series, web series and web content can't exist right now without advertising and, and brand sponsors. So think about branding as you write. You, so that it can be a seamless marriage. You can't think about it after the fact. Think yeah. about it as you write, so you can think about how things can incorporate into the show and uh, identify your uh, potential, know your audience, so you can identify your potential sponsors yeah. and, and write that kind of branding into the show. So. Well, it's kind of interesting because this is, this thing is is structured in a way, but the dialogue and the and the the some of the content isn't like scripted. And I'm a script writer. I've mm -hmm. written tw for 20 years. I'm a screenwriter and I'm working you know in that field as well, but. Um, we we have probably dropped so many names as far as like possible inadvertent yeah. inve investors that it, it's probably right up our. It's there, yeah. yeah. It's it's out there. Yeah. So, like, yeah. I mean, you know, you want to do that because you don't want like to someone to turn a coke can to the camera in the middle of a scene and have like a a, big... a really disingenuous. <laughs> You know, promotional. <laughs> Adam, yeah. turn the yeah. camera yeah. over. So it has to be in there. So the show is really built for a lot of fashion inter interaction, a lot of um, men's grooming, a lot of uh, alcohol, a lot of you know, all yeah. across the board is all the possibilities for different kind of. Yeah. Uh, so the marketing now it hasn't changed that much. Those are the ones in, that are, they'll always invest in. It depends series. on your show. It really yeah. does. I mean, depends on what your content it is and who your audience is. It can vast. I mean, I my show our demographic is eighty percent male, so. There's a whole lot of female wow. products that I can't integrate into the show. But like, yeah. if there was a lot, you know, so web series is geared towards women, you the door, you know, is open for like anything yeah. Procter and Gamble does. You know, uh, Colgate Palmolive, they all have products that you know that will respond to to the women, female consumers. I mean, our female consumer base has grown this year. Yeah. Um, because now we have a straight character who now brings a straight. Um, straighter audience in, so now the audience is a lot more balanced. Um, Wait, there's some, uh, what's her name, Clooney from uh, Career Michelle Soul. Clooney was in the first season. And she's yes, coming back? No, she didn't come back this season. Because it says in a certain article that she might. I'm not. Uh, well, the season's done, so she's not definitely not coming back. I believe you. She was, she was, <laughs> For some there reason, was a, uh, a possibility she was going to come back. Yeah, yeah. Um, but the show just went in a, in a different direction. I wanted to explore Kendra more. And um, there wasn't enough room since the web series to bring in a new, two new brand new characters yeah. that have been made because I actually wanted to give her more, um, more page count. Well, how how is this, the fact that you're 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 done production with second season? Yeah, yeah. How it's does that feel out, yeah. so. in your body? How how does it feel that it's, it's awesome? It was such a um, important to do the second season because I wanted you know first season is all about exposition. So now we can dive into the storylines, and so this season was so much. Like, we made our second season slogan. Again, double entendres, bigger, better, longer, because people kept asking for it to be longer. Yeah, yeah. So I was saying, you know that how you like work. it, bigger, yeah. better, longer. I, I, have, yeah, I haven't seen you in a schlong time. <laughs> right, exactly. Come here. Come here. That was the second choice. Yeah. So, yeah, or, or come here, swallow me this way. <laughs> no. No, so it's it an old joke. To make it's the episodes longer. Uh, they're more meatier, they're deeper in content. There's 65 speaking roles this season. Holy uh, shit. Some of the episodes are network length. Uh, so it's, did, it was did the fans one. carry over? Did you find that they, they stayed with it? Yeah, uh, we have awesome. a, yeah, we have an extremely loyal fan base. I mean, we yeah. had two years between the first the two seasons, and so okay. it was like hard to retain them. But every day we did something, every week or something, we did something different. We had different contests. We I released little parts of the script out on Facebook for yeah. people to read to kind of keep them titillated. Uh, but yeah, we uh, just kind of went for broke this season, and uh, it's definitely paid off. The criti critically, it's just the critical claim. It's a great show, yeah. The roof this season. Uh, uh, yeah, it's, 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 pretty awesome. Awesome. it's something we're proud of. Uh, I have a question. Yeah, go ahead. So what happens if, if tomorrow somebody approaches you from the mainstream TV and they want to offer to... It's a good question. The Will you sell out, uh, Quincy? Is it selling out? Well, I hope someone challenges me with that. Some network challenge. The challenge with the network. Actually, I've already um, gone down the TV route with the show with two different networks. Um, and honestly, unless it's a really great deal, it's just it's more beneficial to keep it online. Um, I get all, all with all the risk come all the rewards. And right now, unless unless it's a, a just an amazing deal, I mean, you can go to TV and not have any con control over creative content. Yeah. 
Um, it becomes made by committee at that point. So there's just a lot to sacrifice. If, if the pros and cons um, are there and they're balanced, there's more pros and cons, I would, I'm open to, we're open to all kind of um, options. Yeah. But right now, it just seemed like some of those deals, it was just better just to stay on TV. Are you doing the uh, Orson Welles thing? You want the full, you want the full creative control, ultimately, executive producer? I do want the full oh, no, right. control, but I'm not averse to like share because I'm not stupid. I know you have to share, right. but it just depends on, on what and, and well, how. Well, between sharing and collaboration, is it? Yeah. 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 And also, once you give it up, it's done. If it doesn't work on TV and then they cancel yeah. it, then they have the rights to it and you can't even take it back. It's in a vacuum. To the website. Yeah. So, it's, yeah, it's done. It's like a big risk. Yeah. But you're, awesome. you're, yeah, but you're, uh, yeah, we got to start wrapping this up. Uh, but not before. Oh, do you have some more stuff no, no, to say? No, no. We could talk. Is all season right. three? Are you writing? Are you writing season three? I have not started writing yet. Um, I'm need. working on other projects, so it's like now it has to find out. We're going to find out how it can fit into sort of the slate of Cube yeah. Entertainment um, into our production schedule. But if you need to, uh, we want to. I need a writer this season because I um, I'm sorry. I'm I, so I, busy that I just got to. I'm so sorry. Try to have a. I, I sold. Try, don't do anything rude like slipping your business card during the show. Don't, don't no, do anything quite I, uh, that obvious. No, I, I don't know if you know. I, I sold three screenplays last year, but. I just okay, okay. have a bad cough. <laughs> I have a bad cough. Um, and he, there it is. There it is. He's going to do it. What is that? Oh, God. Really strange. So, Quincy, so strange are you, what are you working on here? Okay. Quincy, what are you writing now? What are you. Uh, uh, a couple things. Um, I just submitted a, um, a new comedy pilot to um, an unnamed network. I okay. can't name who. Uh, that's really, really great comedy. Um, it's uh well I can't say what it is because people steal stuff so I'm not gonna say what it is but uh yeah, right. but uh it's yeah. really good and another thing is I'm start working on this fall is uh, a new sketch comedy series that will come out in December All right. and uh is there a network attached to that yet or uh that'll be a web series but a, oh, web, series. But a web series like you've never seen before that's oh really like, like oh, big, that's, big, that's big, big 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 yeah. big like the kind of thing there. are well, you'll see it advertised like TV shows, like yeah, really sweet. big, and with names attached. So it's. Like, I'm. It's I. Be I have a new comedy story. series. It's. It's a. It's the first ever spider web series. It's a different spider web web series. No, I'm just, I'm yeah, just, <laughs> superhero. <laughs> what a twist! That's what a twist. No, listen. Well, this is the part of the show where. Um, oh my God! Where are they? Yeah, they are. Oh, and I've got so, commission to write a bunch of features, and so I'm writing. Oh, you're doing all right. Then. right now. You think it's happening? Yeah. You think it's it's? When is it going to oh, go all web? No. When is it going to go all web? When do you think we're going to start watching everything it's on happening. the iPad you know, like, or on the phone? It's it's happening. I mean, with the ad, would you see what House of Cards did? Um, just that was yeah. like a big game changer yeah. to kind of show people what can be done. I think in five years, um, unless cable changes their model or business yeah. model they're kind of going to be shaking in their their boots a little bit yeah we were um, talking last week with um um a, a gentleman who's uh who works with spike lee a lot his julius, name uh, yeah julius prior the fourth we were talking we, there was an article oh, that okay. stella had brought to us about um um steven spielberg hardly getting a, a distribution about, deal for lincoln for lincoln yeah. and saying that most young directors are finding their way through YouTube and other multimedia. Well, a lot of movies just go straight to online release now, and they make their money that way. They just yeah. kind of forego the distribution channels. I mean, TV. I mean, Web is doing the TV what TV did the radio. Uh, it will never go completely away. Radio is still here. Yeah. You know, so it'll never completely go away. It's never going to be like TV's done, and we're just going to watch stuff on inter either internet TVs or online. But it will uh, equal TV at some point. In a, It'll be niche viable, watching. You'll want to go to yeah. TV just to watch what you already know you like. And yeah, and now there's internet TV, so it's like you're watching TV anyway. Yeah. You go online and watch the show. And, and commercials the, suck, man. And the, just call it the equipment is being geared to be able to watch it like, to compete with TV. Like TV because you, Digital cameras and, you know. And that, that, that a lot of... Affects the quality? Oh, I'm sorry. Do you the, think it affects the quality of, of the shows and of... The general? digital the equipment? No, just the, the whole web thing, you know, like the distribution. Um, no, I think, I think we're living in a golden age of TV writing right now. So I think TV dramas are really, really good right now. But yeah, there's yeah. a lot of quality things. There's more things on the web that you've even heard of. Yeah. Um, that that are just as quality. I think, I think it's becoming more quality because it's it's actually this is what I hate about what TV's doing. They're starting to make web series now, so it's making it harder for indie people to make web series because it's becoming more expensive and cost prohibitive to make them because now people have are becoming more savvy and they expect them to have a higher quality. Yeah. So what indie movies were in the early 90s and then the studios started having indie arms and kind of destroyed what the real indie market was. This yeah. is now what TV is starting to do to the web they're series trying to, well, they're, they're trying, trying to get to, in there. And right, you see what the Zach Raps and stuff. everybody are doing and it's kind of like they're like going into a playground that's... that's yeah. uh, Until they figure out the business model. That, that yeah. is usually for... 
the the new filmmaker, you know, who doesn't have connections. They can make an indie web series, and uh, but now it's starting to become, I think, scarcer because now the big boys are making a web series. Like NBC, yeah. maybe they all have their own web stuff. Uh, yeah, there. it's and, like... Um, and you look at Netflix and they're hiring like David Fincher and people like Kevin Spacey. Uh, Ron Howard and Brian, so Graz like, Brian Grazer with the new right. comeback. So of, it's, it's like, called, get out of our area. Like, can we have this? Yeah. Like, you can make any Hollywood movie you want. Like, it's, it's, can we it's, have our area? It's called... Uh, uh, for us? Uh, so listen, um, we got we to gotta start closing the show. So here's the part of the show where I asked you 10 questions. Oh, they're not, wow. They're not, uh, ex they're not like an ex It's like Wendy Williams, like hot... Yeah. Uh, no, no, okay. <laughs> no. I love Jamie's intro, so because it just makes you think. You know what I'm saying? It does. It's like. All right, number one, pe number one, pizza or burger? Hmm. It could be anything in the world. I don't burger. care. Burger. Yeah. Burger. Because <laughs> it's uh, New York City, and it's like there's so many great burger places here. Pizza. Mm, no, number two, salt or no salt? Uh, no salt. Boom done. No salt. It could be anything. It could be on a margarita or on. Oh, definitely you know, not on a margarita. Yeah, yeah, definitely not a margarita. Not a margarita. Number th number three for internet content. Okay. Free or pay? Pay. Boom. Oh. <laughs> Spoken as a true business man. Well, well, well said. Yeah, yeah. Oh, by the business. way, uh, yeah, you can start paying for in, uh, for in between yes, ten <laughs> right now, because that's why I asked that. Uh, number four, investors or crowdfunding? Investors. Okay. I will say that because why? I have yeah, why? No, when I do these these seminars, I tell people up front, I have no expertise in crowdfunding. It doesn't work for me. Yeah. Um, it requires way too much energy. It's too high maintenance. Um, it's too saturated right now, first of all, between Kickstarter and GoGo, and Indiegogo. Yeah. And for me, my expertise is just putting together a great proposal and reaching out to people who have money, as opposed to emailing everybody I know to death and asking them to email everybody they know to death yeah. over, yeah. And over, and over and over yeah. again. It's just, I don't have time. For, like, yeah. Time is money, and, um, and I don't have time to... You have to, people who do it do it well. It's just not my my thing because I think I don't have the time. To and that's it. why that question yeah. is right for mm -hmm. this time. That's great, man. Thank you. Um, five. Who would you love to collaborate with? Mm -hmm. Oh, I'm sorry. Did I just give you my business card? Go ahead. So, right, you did. <laughs> I'm sorry, but I said love though. Love. Who would you love to collaborate love. with? Love. <laughs> this is gonna sound so. Cliche, like right, like right on point, or can uh, I say more than one? Yeah, Holly Berry. I think I love Holly Berry. Holly Berry, cool. Why. And Meryl Streep. I love Meryl, Meryl Streep. Street. But there's a ton of people. Um, yeah, we can talk about that some other time. time. It yeah, be the, it's it's small. I think like, cameo I, time, I, Quincy. Like I think a Halle Berry cameo for next season. I tr trust me. I love that. Right. Like, I mean, your listeners or who our listeners are, that they can be like, why, why those two? And then you could talk. They can find you one day or, or ask you. It doesn't really Holly matter. Berry's the hottest 46 year old woman on the planet. Gotcha. She's pretty hot. Yeah, pretty hot. <laughs> um, number six. Besides yourself, who should we be paying attention to right now in the film TV industry? Oh, that was very thoughtful of me. Don't to think say about other that was really thoughtful of me. <laughs> Let's take a moment and just spoken as a true businessman. <laughs> I really don't. Oh. Sorry, nobody. Boom, me. boom, done. He just he, he just boom did that. Um, number seven. Uh, this might you might have answered this, but where do you think the industry is headed? Um, uh, I like to hope that it's headed to the point where people will pay for content. Okay. No, no, piracy is a natural part of that. They, they subvert it. I, I get it. Yeah, but things get pirated. Some, there's a philosophy that if no one's pirating your stuff, then no one Don't gives a shit. No yeah. gives a shit. So you, you should you, hope that somebody's actually trying yeah. to pirate. Like you're not going to go to the grave with all the money in the world. Go with some of it because right. you need to eat. <laughs> right, exactly. You want to eat too. And, and I hope that the industry is heading to the day that people can walk into a boardroom at a brand and they get taken as seriously as a viable option to advertise as, as television and movies. Or break up the model where at least is a piece for everyone. You know, yeah. not right. everyone wants to make a bottom line. Everyone wants to make a lot of money, that's the thing. Nobody that's wants to be the first one to take a chance, but as soon as someone does and it's successful, then everybody's Everyone's jumping on the scene. Yeah. So now, House of Cards, now everyone's like ready to do that. Sexy you know? show. Uh, number eight, what's your motto? Mm. Hmm. My motto in life? Could be anything. I mean, could have just... Oh, I kind of live, and this is personal and professional, yeah. um, but treat people the way you want to be treated. 
Okay. Nice. And the Golden Rule is my yeah. I don't everything. I was at B and H. I bought some materials for the show a couple of, like a month ago, and I, I said to this uh, one guy that works there, and he's an old guy, Jewish guy, and he had a you know had a had a keep on with payas down to here, and he had gray hair, and I said, hey, how are you? Just in passing, he goes, and I said, how's life? He goes, how are you treated? And he walked away, and I was like, excuse me, come here. Would you would you say? <laughs> he said, you asked me how 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 life was, and I said, how you treated. I was like, that's Obviously. amazing. I mean, it, it, the way that he Thank said you. it was amazing. It comes back to you. I just, I tell you, the um, the first AD on one of our first ADs on In Between Men, um, be careful you how you treat people because yeah. he works. He worked for me, and now on the sketch comedy series, he's one of the exec producers. I'm gonna be working for. Wow. Him. He actually brought me on board. So, that's like, great. Yeah. No one's ever too small to treat with yeah. respect and to treat you, well. You, you know? never really need to get in an angry argument with anybody. Unless, you know, it's not a collaboration. Unless it's in court with your baby's no, mom. No, let your lawyer be, your, be the bad guy. That's another thing. Let the lawyer be the bad guy. Exactly. Let your agent be the no, bad guy. Number nine, an, <laughs> an amazing must-read for the BDL crew and, and listeners. Uh, a book that I am adapting to a screenplay um, oh. called... Um, it just went. Uh, How do you spell that? Is it like a word? <laughs> <It's not laughs> phrase? Wait, 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 it just went. It's looking, the wine. I'm, I'm looking for a U-G-H. Um, U -G -H. It is a uh, James Baldwin oh. novel. Oh, shit. Be great, Nicole. It's a scary oh. wow. What's the name of it? You want to look it up? Oh, yeah, I'm looking it up. Yeah. With what? What do we have? Oh, we have Stark. <laughs> <laughs> um, um, Stella. He's a uh, an, uh, kind of like a. Uh, yeah, James Baldwin. He's like an idol of mine. How about we go to 10 okay. instead and you can yeah, do that? Yeah, yeah. Seriously, just take some time. <laughs> go to yeah. 10. Number 10. What musical artist should we be downloading this minute? <sighs> Does it have to be, have to be new? Hey, they could be old. Absolutely they could be. They could be public domain, baby. I'm doing uh, this. I can probably no. do it. Music you know what? I just actually, I don't really download contemporary hip hop that often. Um, and I just got um, Kanye West's Jesus, and I you love think it. it's worth it. That's like a few years ago. No, no Jesus, came, Je out. Je Jesus came out? No, he had Jesus. A, oh, Jesus. Yeah, no, that, that's new. I'm sorry. I thought you that's said Jesus. have been uh, through the roof. Um, he's, had, he's had good Kanye, yeah? I, I think it's good. Cause, you know why? Because most hip hop right now says nothing. Yeah. It's just bullshit. Kind of really like, kind of like it. the stuff I was rapping about. <laughs> I didn't hear that. So. Baby, it was good. It was good. It was. Smoke. And so, whether you agree with smoking. what he says or not, at least he's saying something. I feel like most um, hip hop artists on that who have that much celebrity aren't saying anything right now, so, um, right. except for a few people. Giovanni's room. Giovanni's, Giovanni's room. room. I'm reading it. Right. Read it. I'm reading it right now. Read it. I'm that Read quick. It. Um, so we answered all those. The last secret question I always ask, the guest never knows, is number eleven. Me or Bill? So, no pressure. Oh, Everybody gets that question. No one has a no one. No one's ego. Will be I'm only gonna pick because <laughs> okay. I thought this. I just took the stick. I thought it before I even met you. As I was like, God, Teron looks hot now. He loves. Oh! <laughs> when I saw you come on, Teron, you're getting up there. We're almost at 500. Yeah. When right. I saw it a lot, I was like. <laughs> I love salt and pepper hair and like I love it. It's a right, whole uh, it's dark right. like Mediterranean I think we're even now, buddy. thing. It's uh, next it's week we're dead even. Yeah, but but, bald, but but then not many white guys can rock a baldy and look sexy. Oh, thank so. you, thank you, yeah, thank you, thank you, thank you very so. much. And we have a little competition. It's been it's been even. Yeah. Yeah. It's been even. Next right, week okay. is there it, the do or die. And, and no for first answer. place, for first place, all the marbles. And and usually I like to try to make it fair. Is there a question that you like to ask me at all? Anything? You don't have to. You could. All right, cool. Can I come back? Yes, you Absolutely. can. Absolutely. Okay. I got the next yeah. two months Absolutely. booked up, but Good. You, I'm, nice at, I'm sure you do too. So I'm not even That'll worried be right about when that. Things are like there'll be something. It was. I want to give you a nice little Thank you. handshake. Pleasure. Pleasure. And, and, well, um, in between men, where can they find it right now? Well, in online. between men. TV. Okay. Dot com. Dot TV. Dot TV. But dot com will take you. Dot TV. So yeah. <laughs> In between men .tv. Um, awesome All guest. Season two is there right now. Awesome, Check it out. awesome guest. He's a force to be reckoned with. Um, Quincy Morris. I'm going to get off this microphone and rock out the rest of the show for the next minute with Jamie Igneo. I want to thank our our special um, uh, our audio person today, uh, Teresa, who just really just came to us 
because I asked her, and she just we like, appreciate it. We yeah. appreciate it. And um, I want to thank the crew. Bill will talk the rest of the show out while me and Jamie get geared up. All right. And I want to especially thank Woo, Pussy Marsh for being here. Awesome. Thank you. And to this back. is Boom right. Live. Turn on Kalak. Out. And I love you guys. Thanks for watching and listening. All right. Bye bye. All right, guys. It's been another life changing episode of Boom Done Live. You can see it's at Boom Done Live. Boom at Done Live .com. Thank you, Quincy Morris. QuincyMorris.com. Also, check out his web series, In Between Men. Thank wow. you, Stella Ballone. Thank you, Teresa Taylor. You can check her out at Miss Religion Productions. Adam Chadwick on the camera did a great job. FitToPrint.com. He's working on a great documentary. Jamie Igneo on guitar. I'm Bill Lurch. We'll see you next Monday. Gentlemen, take it! We'll see you next Monday. <laughs> Peace. All right. This is cool, guys. Thank you, man. Still broadcasting stuff.